بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة على حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين I bring myself to the door of God, in the name of God, closer to me than all my relatives, creator of relationships, and the one who nurtures them best. My devotion and my praises flow to God, the guide and nourisher of the soul and conscience of every being, the one Lord, closer to me than myself, the one to whom I belong, the source of my life and the origin of my identity, I sing the name of my Lord, King of my heart, owner of my soul, judge of my intentions, the truth of my interactions, and the sincerity of my engagement with him. My Lord and nourisher of my soul, here I am in your court, honored by this private audience with you. I stand before your majesty. I beseech you on behalf I beseech you on my behalf and on behalf of all creation, echoing the eternal voice of all conscious beings, those who came before me, those who are living with me, and those who will come after me, I say, our journeying is to you, and in you we find our strength, assistance, and support. You light the way, and you give the will. You are the end, and you are the means. Guide us on your straight path. Lead us in your good way, the way of eternal bliss, walked by your beloved ones, those who awaken to become witnesses to your abundant grace, who appreciate and fully experience your blessings. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul, from being of those who are blind to your beauty and goodness who stay deaf to your call of love, those who consume, dishonor, devalue, or take your gifts for granted. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul, from being of those whose resistance has made them experience divine gifts as deprivation, for whom blessings become barriers and opportunities for guidance and closeness to you become the very cause of their severance. I knock at your door, my Lord. I am at your threshold. Do not let me turn away. May this door never become an obstacle. Open my being to you and open the way for me. Amen. Amen. Open my being to you and open the way for me. Amen. 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 Amin ar-Rahman ar-Rahman ya Rabbil Alameen So what we said yesterday that this meditation is the matrix and the mother and the intention and the builder of the momentum and the starter is the Fatiha Actually, the best translation will be the starter. Mm-hmm. It's the starter. So this is the starter. Because the heart is a motor. And you need to interact with the word of the Lord with your heart. You need to engage that motor. And the motor needs a starter. And this is the start of this is the premier étincelle. This is the first spark. spark. That's actually another name of the Fatiha. The first spark, the starter, the healer. We spoke about the dimensions of the healer last yesterday. Why the Fatiha is the healer, and you understood that we need to heal from the three obstacles. The three obstacles 
that are blocking us from receiving, from being good receptacles to the uh, to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are these three obstacles again? Resistance. Being concerned with what? It doesn't matter. Sorry. And the third thing is uh, not being able to give full devotion to what we do. Hmm? Not be uh, we have not being able to give full devotion huh? to and, and full attention. Can I say devotion? Is it mm. correct to say? Because yeah. it's Commitment. beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Huh? Commitment. Commitment, devotion, attention to to the good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us. That's another obstacle. Because there is an obstacle pre so there are three obstacles, pre-good, in-good, and after-good. So that's why there are three. In the logic, every time you have three, it's pre, during, and after. You understand? That's how we are designed. Every time you hear, you hear three, it's before, during, and after. What's before? Good. Resistance. Resistance blocks good from coming. Destruction blocks good from being enjoyed. It is there. It's from being absorbed. Huh? So resistance will block good from come. Destruction, you are there in the good, but you can't actually you can't get the full experience of it. And lack of thankfulness, lack of commitment, lack of devotion will block good from being kept. You, ex you have the good, you experience the good. And you don't stay loyal to it. And you don't stay loyal to it. After that. So you need, these are the three obstacles. And the Fatiha, is the healer, it's called the healer, because it heals you from this. So what, that's what we should be seeking in it, that healing, okay. That healing from these three obstacles. So, to heal from the obstacle of resistance, the cure will be what? What, what is the cure to heal from resistance? To ask for guidance. To ask. Give me the antonym, the, the, the opposite. What is, the, what is the cure for resistance? Malleability. Uh, what is that state? Openness. The state of mind. Permeate. Openness. 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 Flexibility. Openness. Flexibility. Permeability. Uh, malleability. Acceptance. Being easygoing. Being easygoing. Being wanting, desiring, receiving. So the Fatiha will move us from a state of resistance to a state of openness. Permeability, acceptance, openness. That's why it is an opener. Mm -hmm. huh? of whom? So we should be seeking that. The sentences, you know, the literature is strong. But if the heart is not there, even the, even the best literature won't give you the effect. Yes, there is ihdin al-sirat al-mustaqim, but you need to bring your mind, your heart, you need to bring yourself to the door of God. That's why we started the meditation with, I bring myself to the door of God. You need to bring yourself there, otherwise, you know, even if you are at the door and you don't, even if you are at the door and you don't bring yourself to the door, this reminds you of what? Being at the door and not bringing yourself to the door. Being at the gate, right there at the gate and not bringing yourself to the door. Actually, that reminds me, the average 99% of Muslims are at the door of the masjid. Mm, yesterday, 
That's me at the door of the masjid. Most of the times, except when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me tawfiq to, to start, to spark, to, no, this is the door of the house of my Lord. I, I step back and make my intention and, no, alhamdulillah, I enter in it. I enter humbly. <coughs> I enter with hitta. I enter with humility. God forgive me. Huh? But that reminds you of what in the history? Something in the Quran, God is seen, a scene that God, this, it's, it's a tragic scene, Lee, being at the door and not bringing yourself to the door. And because of that, you are turned away. What a tragic thing. Imagine a movie, people traveling through long desert, heat, all of that, people dying on the road. Khalas, now they are, they are at the door. But they did not bring themselves. What's the meaning of bringing yourself? Your body? No. So their bodies were at the door. They were brought at the door. The tawfiq was there. They, they were at the door. At the door. At the gate of the promised land. At the gate. But they did not bring their heart and their mind to the door. Therefore, they were turned away. Go and work on yourself for 40 years. And when you find yourself, come. When you find yourself, come back. Do you understand? You think that God gives us these stories. Again, the article, we read the article at the first session with you. Is it true that the Quran is cursing Jews and Christians? No. Absolutely not. So why do we have stories of Jews and Christians? We have, we have stories of good Jews and good Christians who should be our predecessors and spiritual ancestors. We should refer to them as such, as the circle of consciousness, as our spiritual ancestors and, and, and predecessors. And there are bad Jews and Christians who should refer to as an example to not fall in. Yeah? Same trap. So to not fall into that same trap. And the Fatiha, because it is the starter, it's about that. The whole Fatiha is to put you in that emotional, emotional state. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Guide us in the straight path. Lead us in your good way. The way of eternal bliss walked by your beloved ones. Who? A Muslim. This is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking before even Islam started. This prayer. Who? He's referring to whom? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the cave, meditating, asking Allah subhanahu wa taala, telling Allah subhanahu wa taala, telling him, guide me, my Lord. On your straight path, he's asking for himself and the people. He's yet to become their prophet. But he was already their intercessor and their qutb, their ghawth. He knew it. Their representative to God. When there was drought, even physically speaking, in Quraysh before, before the revelation, any time they had a drought, who would bring the rain for them? They will run to Muhammad and, they will bring, and he will raise his hands and the rain will come. Since he was a baby, it's known. Yes, he wasn't yet to play the role because the essence is, is, was always, has been always there, the essence of prophethood. He wasn't there yet to play the role of guide and teacher, of, guide and teacher, of messenger of God. But he was what? He was the good man. He was the intercessor. He wasn't teaching as a, a teacher, but he was there to bring peace, to harmonize. He was playing the role that you should be playing in this society. That any good soul should be playing, should be the source of good. Bringing rain to people, bringing baraka to people, bringing peace to people, bringing... Just, just through your presence. Hmm? And through your concern. So this heart full of concern already. So I told you yesterday that according to many 
to many narrations that the Fatiha was inspired to our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the complete a human being, before Jibreel came with it as a revelation. It was inspired as a prayer. God put these words on his mouth and he started asking God, imploring God in this way. That was actually the key. That's why it's called the key as well. Because when we say Fatiha means the key, Fatiha means the starter, Fatiha means the opener, Fatiha means the beginner, Fatiha means the, the, broad, the, the, the bringer of victory, all of this. All of this. Huh? Fatiha means the blossomer. Can we say the blossomer? The breeze that the breeze that will cause the, the bud to, to open. To open. The drop of rain and the drop of light that will cause the sea to germinate and sprout. That's Fatiha. So Again, again, for those who say that the Fatiha, إِهْدِنَا الصَّلَاةَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صَلَاةَ الْدِنَاءَ نَعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ They are the Muslims. And الْغَيْرُ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ لَضَّالِينَ These are the, the Jews and Christians. That's a stupidity. It's a pure stupidity. If you are referring to Muslims as the Muslims by identity, and Jews and Christians are Jews and Christians by identity, that's pure stupidity. It's not true. How could that be? So this is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking before even the creation of the identity of Islam. Islam as identity, Islam as identity wasn't there yet. Even himself did not identify himself to be Muslim as the Islam by identity. When we say Islam by identity, we mean member of a group of, member of, a group of Muslims praying in this way, adoring God in that way, doing these acts. Identifiable by a certain, a certain way of life. So that wasn't there. That, that particular way of life was not anywhere on the scene at that time. But he defined himself as Muslim and he referred to himself as being the awwal al-Muslimi, as the starter of Muslims. Referring to whom? Referring to the Islam per essence. What's Islam? Actually, Islam is the no identity. Islam is the the face of identity. The full the face of identity. Islam is the full submission to the God. The full submission to the Lord. So imagine the heart of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meditating, telling Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on his behalf and on behalf of all people he had concern for, guide us on your straight path. Uh, again, read it again, read it again, and now this is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying. Hmm? Guide us on your straight path, lead us in your good way the way of eternal bliss walked by your beloved ones. Who? He's thinking of whom? When he said your beloved ones, those who awaken to become witnesses to your abundant grace, who appreciate and fully experience your blessings. Who? Who was in his mind, in his heart, when he, when he was saying this prayer? Huh? The prophets. Abraham. Abraham, Jesus, Moses, only? And who else? And those who? Follow their footsteps. And those who are actually now following their footsteps at this time. I'm sure he was thinking of Bahira, the good man he met when he was a child. You think that the meeting with Bahira did not leave any trace in the heart of that beautiful child. You see how children they, they are when they see people, people of God. You think that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after meeting that man of God, I'm telling you by Allah when minhum ummatun qa'amat luna kitab Allah ana alayhum isjudun, his imagination is going straight to that man. He spent three days with him. Three nights he spent and he saw, he witnessed al Bahira praying during the night, crying during the night. He witnessed al Bahira. 
is a humility. Bahira, the priest, the monk. He witnessed Bahira, the monk. He witnessed what it means to be a man of God. Who else? Before even Bahira. Huh? His grandfather. Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. Who else? Before even Abdul Muttalib. Amina. Alayha salamullah. He met in his life and he saw those people huh? walked by, who walked, the, 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 these beloved ones, those who awaken to become witnesses to the abundant grace of the Lord, who appreciate and fully experience his blessings. But more than all of them in number, who? Jews and Christians, they were the Ummatul Qa'ima at that time. The legacy of Abraham was kept in these two forms. At the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Only those two. And the third form, very few, very rare people. Abdul Muttalib, Amina, etc. The, the Ahnaf. But Jews and Christians. And amongst them, there were good Jews. So what, when he said, An'amta alayhim amongst whom? Nan nabiyina wa siddiqina wa shuhadai wa salihin. Amongst all. The Jews, the Christians. The true Muslims, the Muslims, the, 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 those who fully submitted their will to God and asked God, you light the way and you give the will. Hmm? And absolutely after that when he says, I seek refuge in your eternal grace and your everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul, from being of those who are blind to your beauty and goodness, who stay deaf to your call of love, those who consume, dishonor, devalue or take your gifts for granted, also, here he's referring to some Jews. Maybe they were the majority. And yes, they were the majority. If the majority of Muslims today are not living the true Islam, why would that be an insult to say that the majority of Jews are not living the true Judaism? It's, an, it's, a, it's a natural law. It's a natural law. We read it in the Quran. Always it's qaleel. Always the good people are qaleel. Minority. Minority, always. So we're not insulting Jews when you say that the majority of them were misguided. What is the? Did he, did Allah subhanahu wa taala said, and you will find all of them fasiqin? You will find the majority of them fasiqin. I will say that about Muslims today. What is the? Did Allah Someone who this uh, they nahawal mantle of honor. Uh, they 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 took off the the, man, the, the, the robe of honor that was. They given slipped to them. away from the robe of honor that uh, that God dressed them in. Uh, they they took off. They just uh, that's the fusuk. Fusuk is when God covers you and you take the, you uncover yourself and you you, you go away, away naked. Away. That's the fusuk. Bi'as al kufr al fusuk ba'd al iman. The worst. The worst ingratitude. form of ingratitude. The worst form of ingratitude is to slip away, is to take off the mantle of honor that God had huh? dressed you. Has dressed you. I can say that about Muslims today, and you will find the majority of them fasiqi. Statistically speaking, statistically speaking. Am I insulting Muslims? Am I insulting Islam through doing that? This is just a natural law. We just said yesterday that in unconsciousness we are six billions or seven billions. In the world of consciousness, how many they are? I hope I could say we are, inshallah. But you know, how many? A few thousands? If any. It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing. That's why we should aspire to that noble, huh? to that uh, resplendent circle of consciousness. Do you understand then? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking in the Quran like that, is not cursing the religion per se or the people who... Astaghfirullah. So, and alayhim, referring to Jews and Christians. <laughs> 
مغضوبة عليهم الضالين أو صورة فرنت جوز إن كريستينز هذا نوت ذا سيم بيبل ليس سواء ليس سواء ذي نوت ذا سيم من أهل الكتاب أمة قائمة ذي نوت ذا سيم after the surah of al imran in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the most beautiful stories of the best people on earth who were the ali imran and also after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set the record huh? straight don't say son of god etc and talking about those who actually In Ali Amran, it's all, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke also about the, those who uh, uh, left the way amongst uh, Jews and Christians, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, makes sure, right before closing, the closing note. Closing note, it's just coming there out of nowhere. I mean, we are, in fi khalq samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al layli wal nahari la ayatini ulil albab. It's the conclusion. Khalas, we are not talking about people anymore. Huh? In the creation of the heavens and earth, and then the prayer and then the dua. Uh, hmm? Allah. فالذين هاجروا وأخرجوا من ديارهم وأوذوا في سبيلي وقاتلوا وقتلوا لأكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولدخلنهم جنات تجري من تحت النار وثواب من عند الله والله عنده حسن الثواب لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل ثم أوهم جهنم بأس المهاد لكن الذين اتقوا ربهم لهم جنات تجري من تحت النار خالدين فيها نزلا من عند الله وما عند الله خير للأبرار You expect naturally should be يا أيها الذين آمنوا صبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون. God is talking to Muslims here and telling them, engaging them usual normally. You should just jump. But there is a verse there. What is this verse doing here? For someone who doesn't understand that the way God talks and the way people of God actually speak. What is the structure? Sheikh, could you just make me one, two, three, four, number, petit ta, petit b, petit c, and after that, uh, micro a, micro b. That's not how we talk. You understand? It's God who's talking, and it doesn't mean, oh, he, he's disorganized in his thoughts. Verse of Sharia, verse of Taqwa, verse of Iman, verse of this. But uh, under. No, there is a reason. So you don't become arrogant, ya Muslimin. The closing note, hey, and be careful. It's not because we spoke about Jews and Christians in this surah that you can know. No, no, no. وَإِنَّ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَمَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ خَاشِعِينَ لِلَّهِ لَا يَشْتَرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابِ After that, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اصْبِرُوا وَصَابِرُوا It's an inter- interjection? It's an the... mm-hmm. huh? mm-hmm. it's, it's interjection. It's just the verse is just... Mm-hmm. I mean, for, 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 for the style of writing today, what, what are you saying here? Why? It's, it's misplaced. I remember when I was 14, I wanted to reorganize the Qur'an. Just like that, uh, my shaitan told me, it's not organized. So I started reorganizing it. Okay. I said, okay, just my shaitan told me, you know what? I did not read it in any book, no Salman Rushdie, nothing. Just told me, just out of good, out of good will. I said, there is something wrong here. This is Surah Nisa, and after that, after, after, after the, after starting, أَعْتَصِمُ بِالنُّورِ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ أيوة, no, آخر Surah Nisa, قبل آية الكلالة فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَعْتَصِمُ بِهِ وَتَبَعُوا النُّورِ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ After that, when رجل يسألونك عن الكلال, إيه After, yeah. after that peak of, of spirituality. You have to translate because some people are not yeah. following you. So you do. <laughs> you have to slow down for me too. 
Huh? You did not get the idea? Yes, of course I did. So you are safe. So yeah, I think you explained it. Go on. So I mean, uh, the idea that there are verses of of uh, reminder and verses of a description of God's power and His beauty, and then right next to it will be right after it will be a verse describing a matter of divine law and how to uh, execute a matter of that divine law, which sounds very mundane next to the verse that came before it. So describing the light of God and how it illuminates the entire universe, and then uh, then then the next verse is about um, a matter of how to mundane, mundane things. things that belong in the uh, world and how, how to interact with one another. You uh, understand? That Just, it seems weird. So I started the organ. No, no, the legal verses all together, and and and, and the and the love verses all together, and this and the Ahl Kitab verses all together. Actually, it ended up being a very beautiful work that helped me to understand the meaning. And you need to do that work, by the way. It's good to do it. But after that, that opened the mind and the heart to oh, the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way the world. Only, I only understood why it is like that after listening to the mudakaras of people of God. And I saw in their life, they are just addressing a very deep spiritual matter. And then in the same moment, not like that. You should never put the bakhur like that. And then go back to the spiritual matter, etc., etc. And then that, that one should never be like that. I told you a thousand times it should. And it's not because they are dis 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 disorganized. Or it's, distracted. Or distracted. It's the same. It's one same thing. And, and, and it's speaking to the heart, to the mind, to the, to the body, to everything in the same. It's, it's, it's beyond anything. It's ajib. It's majis. Huh? It's a, high, it's a very high level of presence. Uh, being able to be completely present in the physical space you're in, in the time that you're in, and also present with God at the same time. For most of us, we, we can't comprehend that when we look at it because for us, we like to com compartmentalize. So if I'm going to be doing my, you know, organizing my office, and that's, that's what I'm doing, I won't be thinking about God while I'm doing it. I'm just organizing right now. And then when it's time for me to think about God, I have to go and you know think about God and mm. so, so so yeah and actually actually last year when my brother was here he's, he 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 recognized it about you when you were when you were teaching the brothers and you were doing something at the same time and you were looking all around and he was like Aha, it's a very very high level of presence and, and yeah so you know. So when you see that example in, a, in, in some human beings, then subhanAllah, how about God? You know? And that's what I believe, that's what God is training us to be. Because the Quran, the Quran is not about God, the Quran is about you. God is speaking to you to forge your personality. The Quran personality is that kind of personality. It's the personality that is aware of everything and could take this and this in the same time. It's not distracted by this, when I'm practicing law now, I become just a, a lawyer. No, in the same time, talking about talaq, what taqullah? وَمَا يَتَّقُوا اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَقْرَجَ وَرَزُقُنَا حَيْدُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Allahu Akbar. Yes. That's the Quranic personality. When you are a lawyer in your cabin and in the court, in the same time, you are a man of God. And when you are a man of God, in the same time, you are an activist. وَهَكَذَا it's not compartment, com, par, compartmentalized. Com? Compartmentalized. Compartmentalized. It's not compartmentalized. <laughs> Even the word it is, is heartalized. That's compartmentalized. <coughs> huh? No, that's compart and mentalized. So this is compare heartalized. <laughs> it's not compartmentalized. So we are in the same time on many things. This is very. This is a really important yes. point because it's, it's part of the crisis that we have as a community today, and many teachers yeah. as well. Um, so you referred to the verses in which uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, God, speaks of uh, the, the the rules that pertain to divorce, and and every other verse there is a call from God: uh, have consciousness of God, have consciousness of God, and have a sense of. Um, your limits and I have a sense of the that, that God is watching you in all of this so you know you talked about don't be just a legal expert without remembering that you're a man of God and 
what is a man or a woman of God, but an expression of, uh, of God's love and compassion for the human being. And uh, subhanAllah, it just remind, it took me back to an experience I had when I was, I think, 12 years old. And I asked uh, uh, someone who had come as a speaker to Vancouver um, at an Islamic conference, a very well-known speaker. And I, I, I spoke about a situation that I had witnessed in my family and that was really challenging for me to understand. And he said to me, that, that's what happened or what, what this person in your family did, it's, it's allowed. And it's, it's fine in Sharia, but it's not morally fine. Oh. That answer stayed with me for the next, until I was 19 and went to Syria. I, and I kept thinking about how can something be okay in Sharia and immoral? I thought Sharia was morality defined. And perhaps he meant something else. Later on, we, you know, Sheikh Hamdi also said there's something called Ihsan. And maybe that's what he's saying, that it's not, okay, technically speaking, it wasn't a crime, but, you know, it, it lacked Ihsan, this, this action that I had described to this, to this uh, speaker. But for me as a 12 year old, I, it caused a big rift in my mind and a big problem Actually, to think Actually, it's the cause uh, of the opening. Alhamdulillah, yes, a rift is also an opening, alhamdulillah. Um, so so we, need, we, we, need, we, we do see that. We see people who hand out uh, just legal rulings and, and they don't think about the breaking of hearts that, that occurs as a result. They don't think about all of this collateral damage. It's just a side story. And, and so subhanAllah, this Quranic personality, this shaping by the very the structure of the verses, it's so profound actually. And I, uh, uh, I heard recently also in, a, in, in something one of our teachers was saying that even the pacing, even the pacing of the verses is to send you a message. Even Imagine that even the structure, the organization, the shortness or the length of each verse, all of this is, is part of the message. And all of this, mm. you have to open yourself to mm. it. It's not just an, a beautiful object mm. in a museum to say, oh, isn't that cool? Mm. Oh, how, how interesting. Isn't that a neat fact? It's really open yourself to it and let that pacing hit shape you. Shape you. Not, let that you. pacing shape you. So it, it shapes your 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 geography, your your your, uh, your, uh, your inner landscape. Uh, your inner landscape. So that's how your personality should be, like the verses of the Quran are. It's inter interwoven, interwoven. Your morality and your spirituality and your activism and your uh, cannot be just mundane like that. Everything in in together, and it's not like compartmentalized in, in that way. It's very, very important. I mean, look at us today with this, with this obsession with efficiency and thinking that compartmentalizing, huh? Com? Compartmentalizing. So now I'm, I'm going to start a, a Senate meeting, <laughs> as, you can as you can anticipate. So with this, this obsession with organization, having things compartmentalized, what is my role, Sheikh? I, just give me one role. Why, well, you are a robot, mister? Give me my place, and then just to put you in a box there, and then to have to have an, an to have an organization of, of of objects. Huh? Do you understand? No, you have to be a Quran. You have to be a Muhammadi. Even if you are doing making the videos, what is the reflex? Reflex should be there in no time. A reflex is a sign of life, if you don't have reflex. Even if your rule is not really to host people. Anyone sitting here can't, can't understand that. You don't, can't remember last year what kind of shares we were giving to elders? Don't remember? You have it in the photos, don't you? How many times have I organized the chairs last year, these chairs, and we had more seniors, we were more blessed last year. I had like at least six of them, and don't, don't you remember? And bringing these heavy chairs and putting them, no, forgot about that completely? You forgot? God bless you, seriously. We have the photos. Yeah? Now, Uncle Mother, stop it coming because of the black chair. Because it hurts him. 
And then I said, why, why would that hurt him? And now I notice, oh, so subhanAllah, so you are not giving him his share. And you're not giving him his share. What are you doing? What are we doing? Do you understand? Ma it doesn't take, oh, 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 Sheikh, we have to organize us and to have someone who is hosting elders. Okay, now, khalas, now we'll be, now we'll be, we want to become like the UN, the most in, inefficient organization in the world and the most organized, organized organization in the world in the same time. Okay, okay, you are the, the elders, you take care of children, you take care of between 12 and uh, with, with adolescents. And that's not how things happen. There is something called beauty, reflex, morality, uh, ihsan, smile, politeness, visiting the sick, going to janazah, these things they don't take from the time. And you can't be given that role, you're going to be attending janazahs for us. Oh, yeah. The Janaza man. <laughs> Seriously. This is, this is what you want us to do? That's organization for you? Because it's exactly like the that. The smiling face. Khalas. Okay, Noor, you, you smile with people. Because you have a smiley face. That's what they do actually in organizations today. Okay, you can smile. So that, that one, you, they, 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 they give smiling to, and everyone also. <laughs> You are the one to smile to people. You are the one to greet to people. You, are the, you just prepare coffee. Don't, don't smile. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Being nice, smiling, having the reflex. Having, it's for everyone. It's being. That's being. That's not doing. That is the doing and the being. That is the doing and how are you doing? It should be how are you being? They, they need to change it. I'm doing well. No, I'm being well. There is the doing and the being, it's not the same. And many people in Ramadan are focusing on the doing. The doing, that small task and, the, and here, and then they forgot the being. So because I'm doing my fasting, I forgot about being nice to people. Or I'm justified to not be as nice to people. No, 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 no. He used to be the nicest person, and he used to be even nicer in Ramadan. And he would be nicer in the second 10 days than the first 10 days. People, they will just know how many days, just subhanAllah. And nicer during the last 10 days than the second 10 days. It's like going like this with him. The hadith is there. And the day of Eid, he becomes like, like يعني, subhanallah. Hmm? That's how it should be. It's not, oh, khalas, the last 10 days, people are so tired and so stressed out. And, no, that's not how it should be. Or so self-focused. I did not finish my khitma Because I'm doing my khitma. My khitma is reading my full Quran. Khalas, I don't have time to, to cook for you, my husband, anymore. Okay, so? I don't have time to smile to you, my wife, anymore, because I'm, I'm doing my... No, that's not right. Allah Akbar. There is the doing and being. When Rasulullah was doing his i'tikaf, he kept being nice to Sayyidah Aisha alayhi salam Allah. And just imagine she would be combing his hair. And even during the ruling of fasting, some people they understand that okay, during fasting time I can't even touch my wife, I can't Only that thing, only the peak of the relationship, the physical relationship, you cannot do in Ramadan. Not the rest of relationship, which is being nice, which is not about sexuality, which is about just being good, nice, yeah. which, sharing love. Good company. Being good good company. company. Hugging, kissing. Even the kissing, the one that 
you know, even that. It's not about, as long as it's not about sexuality. That's how it is. We know, we have all the hadith about it. It's not about khalas now we. I was doing my atikaf in the beginning. Told you that khalas, you need to have, you have your room and I have my room. Khalas, let us have two apartments now. <laughs> two. Found myself, I found myself becoming Jewish without knowing. Ooh, then I understood why that Sharia became that, became that cruel. Am I insulting Jewish people? Am I? I'm not. I'm not. I'm insulting the human stupidity. It touched the Judaism, it touched Christianity, and it is touching more than anything else today, Islam. When a human stupidity comes to mingle with divine law. I mean, imagine that stupidity when your wife or your mother or your sister have, is having her period. Period. Or menstruation. Khalas, she can't, she has her, her own kitchen now and she has her own, and, and she. She can't cook for you. She can't, uh, you can't sit at the same table. You can't sit on the same chair after she sat there. Yeah. That's, that's in the law huh? for Jews, for the Jewish people. Yeah, and some Muslims tried to bring it. During the time of the Sahaba, Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab, he punished his son because he said, what are you doing to the religion of Muhammad? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar, he was very zealous at some point as a young man, and he was going down that, that road, and because they were impressed, because it's very normal to become impressed with the, uh, with the discipline. And these young Muslims who were born into Islam, they started getting impressed with the with the discipline of the rabbis and, 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 and how they were like, so, okay, let us do that. And they started forcing women to, the, the, all of that misogynity and segregation and it came as fruit of a human stupidity. Extremism like that. It's very normal, it's very natural that a sincere human being huh, will be inclined to really this compartmentalization and this discipline and, and rules, rules, rules. It's very normal. That's why we have to be careful with ourselves and if we are a teacher with our students. It's very normal that a new student will be so obsessed, will be, will, will, will be obsessed with rules. It's very easy that they fall into that obsession because they want to be right, right? They want to be good. They want to do everything correct. You understand? It's very easy to become a zealot if you are a zealous. Do you know the zealot? The zealot? That, what, what's the name? The name? The name? Zealot. Yeah. Zealots, yeah. Zealots are the zealous people amongst the students of, 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 of Sayyidina Musa. And they were, they were the khawarij of the... Uh -huh. They were those who were asking questions every, every, every other day to Sayyidina Isa. Jesus, to Jesus. Say that, Jesus, If you are a zealous, you become a zealot. And uh, it's very easy. It's a noble thing in the beginning. The starter is good, but you have to be careful. You have to manage that energy. So some companions, some young companions were going that, that road. And so some of them, they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to fast the rest of the, all, all my life. The other one, they said, one of them was Abdullah ibn Umar. Hudayfa came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked, I want to do castration. And that's the other human stupidity that Christians started. They did not start, they just copied it on, on people before them. I mean, the word stupidity in my brain doesn't, it's not that bad, just like, Silliness. Should I change it to silliness or? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Stupidity is so strong for you, so? Hold on, so let us keep it there. So. Foolishness. Foolishness, foolishness. That's it. Foolishness. I'm so foolishness, a human foolishness. Or lack of maturity. Wrongness, wrongness. Okay, wrongness. Mm -hmm. Wrongness. Okay. Same thing. 
And some of them were also trying to halas. Now, what, what's going on? One of the wives of the companions came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam noticed that she had even a hair in her face. A, a, she started having a, a mustache. Practically. And he, from, from far away, it's not Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was gazing like this, but it's a normal thing. He saw that and he asked his wife, said, could you ask her what's happening to her? Why is she Mabalwa? She, she wasn't like this before. She used to be such. She, was, she used to be Yani, the wife of Sayyidina Uthman bin Mad'oon. What's happening to the wife of my brother? Sayyidina Uthman bin Mad'oon was the beloved of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before anyone else. He was the first one who died in Medina, the first one who was, who was buried in Baqiyah. And the, the first grave, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought a rock, a huge rock to put it on his grave, so a huge rock, he brought it by himself for those who today he want, they want us to step on the grave. He's the one who built the grave. They said it is high like this. The children of Medina, they used to compete. Who could jump over it? Those who are not know the graves, they, they, it's in the hadith sahih, Rasulullah built himself the grave of Sayyidina Uthman bin Mad'un through putting a huge rock on top of it that no 10 people could not carry it, he carried it by himself and he put it there. He said, I don't want to lose sight of this grave. And then the children of Medina, they kept the competition, who could jump over it because it was, it was really, so the grave was this high of Sayyidina Uthman bin Mad'un. The gravestone. The gravestone. Stone. It's not just a gravestone like, no, no, the grave, that, the stone that would put on Cover. top of it. Yeah. You understand? So for those today who tell you no gravestones, etc., from where you are bringing this? Actually, that was the first grave in the Baqiyah. Anyways, so the wife of Sayyidina Asma Mad'un, she came to Rasulullah, uh, to the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam noticed that, and he asked, what's happening to the wife of my brother? And Sayyidina Aisha asked her, salam, she asked her, she said, I haven't seen your brother for ages now. Are you divorced? No. I just, he's fasting the day and praying the night. He's fasting every day and praying every night. You can go and sit between them. You'll be blessed. I said, no, 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 no. That's not how it should be. That's not how it should be. Herself also, she was just fasting and and praying the whole night, so no time to really clean or hmm? take care of her. her. They take understood. care of herself. They understood. He went to Sayyidina Uthman Mad'un and he told him, Alayhi Salaam Kafiya Uswa, that's not how it should be, etc. Khalas. The following day she came back to visit Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his hand, her hands are in henna and, 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 and her perfume. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was happy. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean to become, hmm? We started all this because we were starting talking about, uh, uh, I'm busy doing, I'm busy serving so I can't smile. I'm busy serving the Sheikh so I can't smile. Smiling is not doing, smiling is being. Doesn't take any energy, doesn't take any calorie to smile. <laughs> Actually, it produces. It doesn't. But why? Have you heard anyone getting tired because they smile? <laughs> huh? Ah. <laughs> you know? Yes, I'm doing the service, but you have to keep being nice. 
and being aware. Awareness is not doing, awareness is being. It's a reflex. Oh, it's not my field. No one told me. We have a fundraiser dinner next week in Toronto, etc. Okay, see the, you know, the booth. Are we going to booth? I, I have no idea about it. It's not my field. No? Did you offer your help? I have already too much on my plate. No. At least, at least, how can I help? Oh, that's so great. At least, at least offer your enthusiasm. At least show us that you are there. Show her, not us. I'm not even, I mean, that you are there. That we are in one body, that we are ala qalbi rajlin wahid. That we have one heart. Sharing a post is being, is not doing. Liking a post is to smile, right? Putting a heart, doing something, it's being, it's not doing. It doesn't take any energy. Saying thank you is being, is not doing. It's a reflex. It's a reflex. Reflex is being, is not doing. It's your personality, it's your inner being. Manifested. It's very important. A reflex should come there. Awareness, okay, you are, you are having a booth. Okay, you are having... Shouldn't we do this? Even, even if I don't have time to do it, but bring the... Don't worry, don't worry. Allah will put barakah. Just but bring it. People are holding back from bringing suggestions and initiatives just because they're worried. Oh, uh, no, no, we have to do this first. No, that's inspiration. You will be, you will be called. God will tell you, why did you kill this inspiration? The inspiration that comes to you is not yours. It's our rizq. Share it with us at least. It's a provision for others sometimes. It's a provision for the whole For everything. Community. Had Sayyidina Bilal kept his dream to his own self, wouldn't have the adhan. The call to prayer. The call to prayer. Had Sayyidina Damim and Dari killed that inspiration and said, okay, I'm just a guest. I just came from Palestine, from Dari and and they, so they know what to do here. I'm just a new. Let me take 10 years until I become, until I, I know what it is. Just since the first day. So why the message is, is, is dark? What's going on with you guys? Yes, you are beautiful, Muhajirun, Ansar, Jazakumullah Khair, but. There's a way to light it up. There is a way. Okay, let me show you how to make lamps. And then kept. After that, the member came. After that, how to greet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into the game. Because Mahajirun al-Ansar, they used to just... They were not used to greet people of God in that way. Etc., etc., etc. So your doing should not eclipse your being. Wait, Yanur, yeah, no, wait. So your doing should not block you from being. Your doing should not block you from being the one you should be when you are busy doing an action, etc. We are, very, we are busy serving the community. So that's why you should be mean to the community? <laughs> why, why, why? why that imam or that priest is, is, is mean? Oh, he's so busy serving the community. <laughs> He doesn't have time to smile. Again, going to Janazas is being, is not doing. Do you understand? Visiting the sick is being, it's not doing. 
Asking how are you is being, it's not doing. Do you understand this? Saying thank you is being, it's not doing. It's the personality. Crying with the one who cries is being, it's not doing. Smiling with the one who smiles, it is being, it's not doing. Singing and dancing in a wedding of a friend, it is being, it's not doing. It is very, 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 very important. And because of that, we read the Quran in that way. The structure, the engineering of the Quran, it is engineering of our personality. The, the Prophet told us, Quran. And Sayyidah Aisha alayhi salam Allah, she summarizes it in one word. They ask her, how was the personality of Muhammad? Not the character, the personality. Can you describe for us the personality of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa She answered them, do you read Quran? She said, yes. His personality was the Quran. Don't take this statement lightly. It's very deep. Come here. Assalamu alaikum. Please come. Fill, fill, fill the gaps. Mashallah. They are waiting for you, these chairs. Mashallah. Gloucester Mashallah. High School. Oh. Represents. Marhaba. Delegation, come here. Yeah, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. <sighs> nice to see you. Alhamdulillah. It's being. It's being is not doing. Hmm? So, subhanAllah, don't take that hadith lightly, please. People are going to say the Aisha, alayhi salam, Allah, our mother, telling her, how was the personality of our father? Hmm? So people were, went to their mother, man, not women. Women did not need that question. Sidi Ahmed Luqman, can you come closer so fill that gap in front of you? Sure. Now, uncle, sit on the chair if you want. He, he, he's free. He's free. Whatever. He, Alhamdulillah. This uncle is still young. <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. Khalas. Now. Alhamdulillah. You did what you should do. He is he's, he's, he's free to do what he wants after that. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Compete with Sidaab Rahim. Sidaab Rahim is still young. Alhamdulillah. So. Huh? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, so the. Allah Akbar. Allah Allah. Allah Allah. Allah يبارك فيك الله يزيدك الله يحفظك ما شاء الله ها it's being is not doing so you're saying about the hadith so say the Aisha alayhi salam Allah so the sisters did not need to go and ask her how was the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam why because they had access to her and to the Umm Salama and to the Umm Habiba alayhi salam Allah so they had access to the prophetic personality through the mothers. Why the mother and father? What, what, what does the mother and father do? Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi said, love is my mother and father. Why? It means what? What do the mother and father do? Hmm? They shape you. Personality. They bring you into existence and then they shape your personality. Hmm? And Mawlana Rumi said, love is my father and mother. It means love is the shaper of my. First of all, love is what brings me to exist. Love is what made me exist in the circle of consciousness. And that's how actually you get born in the circle of circ consciousness. You get born in the human ghafla circle, the way we know. <laughs> But you get born in the circle of consciousness huh? with love. Only love make you born, a newborn, huh? a reborn. Only love will make you born and reborn. Hmm? 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is telling us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is our father and the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are our mothers. What would the father and mother do? They shape your personality. So, khalas, the daughters of Sayyidah Aisha and the daughters of Sayyidah Muhammad Salam, alhamdulillah, they, they saw the Prophet's personality, but the poor, the poor uh, tabi'un, they were asking, okay, let us see the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidah Aisha could have, could have just given an easier answer. How dare you asking me this question and you have Ali in front of you? Don't you see Ali? She could have given this answer and should be as correct as the answer that she gave, if not more, easy to track. Don't you see Ali? Yes. That was Rasulullah Sallallahu Don't you see Abu Bakr? Yes. That's how Rasulullah Sallallahu was. Don't you see Umar? Yes. That's how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was. But she wanted to awaken their hearts to something more into the Quran. I take that hadith as a hadith of tafsir. It's not about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's actually about the Quran and the role that the Quran should play in our lives. Don't you read the Quran? They came to ask her, how was the personality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ahla sahl. How was the personality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How was the personality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And she asked, her answer was, don't you recite the Quran? Yes. His personality was the Quran. It means what? Now we take it in a romantic way. You, you see the problem when we don't, when you don't challenge the meaning. You have to fajr al-meaning. You have to fajr al-ma'na. You have to extract it. For me, in the beginning, when I heard that the verse, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. How could his personality would be the Quran? The Quran, there are, there are verses of punishment, there are verses of, of, of war, there are verses of mercy. There. It means what? It means what we were saying in the beginning. Mm. The full awareness encompassing everything. Able to address everything. Able to address everything. Oh, being in everything. Hmm. And Sayyidah Aisha through that statement, alayhi salamullah, she was not teaching them about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa she was teaching them about the Quran. She was telling them the Quran is not about doing, it is, it is about being. Hmm. She understood. She understood their problem and their crisis. Those people, they were asking about the akhlaq as doing thing. No, no, it's a personality. It's about being thing. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Kissing the hand of an elder. It's a being, it's not a doing. You understand? To be or not to be, that's the question. Huh? It is a being, it's not a doing. So they came to her and she, she, she saw, alayhi salam, Allah said, Aisha herself, huh? she was young and she, she saw this. And, hmm? She was, she was uh, older than Abdullah bin Abbas and Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar. She said about them, I don't take their tafsir because they were young. Now, how old was uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas when he reached Medina? Hmm? Twelve years old, at least. Hmm? Yeah, 13, 12, 13 at least. Listen. And say the Aisha, she is looking at Abdullah bin Abbas as a, a young man who doesn't understand. So she is older. older than him. So could a girl who has, who was nine year old, 
according to those who want to say that. Say about someone who is older than her. Doesn't that son is still young? Allah. What's another thing you added to the discussion of last night? Did you follow what Sheikh Hamdi just said? So that thing of six and nine year old just 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 dump it into, into the garbage. Barakallahu feekum. Habibakumullah. Clearly, with, with hundreds of ahadith, you have it. So, yes, now if she was 19 year old, yes, a 19 year old could look at a 13 year old, he's still young. <laughs> to go back. So, those kids were coming to ask Sayyidah Aisha alayhi salam Allah. And she knows, alayhi salatu salam Allah, what a young man could, and the, and the traps in, in which a young man could fall. And she told them. They came to ask about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, let me teach this, something about the Quran in the same time. Two, two in one. She gave them an answer about Rasulullah and about the Quran. Two in one. So she told them that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is in the Quran, mm -hmm, and that the Quran is about being, it's not about doing. That the Quran is a shaper personality. of personality. How? Yes, to hello halala wa to harima harama wa tajdanibuna. Yes, absolutely. How? When you vibrate with it. When you build that personality, the Quranic and the Muhammadi personality. So this is to say that uh, in the beginning, for those who did not. He said, why the verses, they, they, they seem not... Uh? Follow an order or a sequence that stays with a single, a single topic. There are verses of law interspersed with verses that describe the majesty of God, interspersed with verses that speak about the hereafter and our destiny, and all of these are being addressed within a single space of five verses or a chapter. And that's why the Fatiha is the starter of that spiritual awakening. It's not just a spiritual awakening, it is a spiritual urge. Because what awakens? What is spiritual awakening? Spiritual awakening is about... Transformation. Transformation, and it is about what? Longing. It's a flame, it's a flame, or it's not. It is a burning flame, or it doesn't exist. We don't awaken, oh, I'm awakened. You awaken and you start crying. <laughs> you don't just awaken and, oh, I'm, yeah. Awakening, and, and our sister awaken could, could tell you about it very well. Awakening, it burns, right? It burns. It burns. It's a flame, or it, or, it, or it doesn't exist. Consciousness is concern, or it doesn't exist. It's not just a lovey-dovey thing. No, no, you're doing something. That's why that Fatiha is there to build that urge. I seek refuge. I seek refuge. I don't want to be of those who let the hmm, opportunities go like that. Just read it now, Sidi Ahmed Luqman. Can you read it and just let us, uh, with the intention, with the intention, read it embodying, read it now, embodying, embodying the spirit of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the cave. Just, just project yourself in that. Just imagine yourself now, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the cave for the revelation, you know, opening yourself, opening your being to be. Allah Bismillah. And let us listen to it in the same way. Let us bring that qutb uh, within us 
the Muhammadan pole, the Muhammadan heart within us, which is the heart of the heart of the heart of your heart. And really, recite it with that heart. Bismillah. Bismillah. In the name of God, closer to me than all my relatives. I bring myself. I bring myself to the door of God. In the name of God, closer to me than all my relatives, creator of relationships, and the one who nurtures, me, who nurtures them best. My devotion and my praises flow to God, the guide and nourisher of the soul and conscience of every being. The one Lord closer to me than myself, the one to whom I belong, the source of my life and the origin of my identity, I sing the name of my Lord. King of my heart, owner of my soul, judge of my intentions, the truth of my interactions and, and the sincerity of my engagement with him. My Lord and nourisher of my soul, here I am in your court, honored by this private audience with you. I stand before your majesty, I beseech you on my behalf and on behalf of all creation, echoing the eternal voice of all conscious beings, those who came before me, those who are living with me, and those who will come after me. I say, our journeying is to you, and in you we find our strength, assistance, and support. You light the way and you give the will. You are the end and you are the means. Guide us on your straight path. Lead us in your good way, the way of eternal bliss walked by your beloved ones, those who awakened to become the witnesses to your abundant grace, who appreciate and fully experience your blessings. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul from being to, of those who are blind to your beauty and goodness, who stay deaf to your call of love, those who consume, dishonor, devalue, or take your gifts for granted. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul, from being of those whose resistance has made them experience divine gifts as deprivation, for whom blessings become barriers, and opportunities for guidance and closeness to you become the very cause for their severance. I knock at your door, my Lord. I am at your threshold. Do not let me turn away. May this door never become an obstacle. Open my being to you and open the way for me. Amen. I bring myself to the door of God. In the name of God, closer to me than all my relatives, creator of relationships, and the one who nurtures them best. My devotion and my praises flow to God, the guide and nurture of the soul and conscience of every being. The one Lord, closer to me than myself, the one to whom I belong the source of my life and the origin of my identity. I sing the name of my Lord. I sing the name of my King, King of my heart, owner of my soul, judge of my intentions, the truth of my interactions and the sincerity of my engagement with him. My Lord and nourisher of my soul, here I am in your court, honored by this private audience with you. I stand before your majesty, I beseech you on my behalf and on behalf of all creation, echoing the eternal voice of all conscious beings, those who came before me, those who are living with me, and those who will come after me. I say, our journeying is to you, and in you we find our strength, assistance, and support. You light the way, and you give the will. You are the end, and you are the means. Guide us on your straight path. Lead us in your good way. 
the way of eternal bliss walked by your beloved ones, those who awaken to become witnesses to your abundant grace, who appreciate and fully experience your blessings. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and teacher of my soul, from being of those who are blind to your beauty and goodness, who stay deaf to your call of love, those who consume, dishonor, devalue, or take your gifts for granted. I seek refuge in your eternal grace and everlasting light, my Lord and my teacher of my soul, from being of those whose resistance has made them experience divine gifts as deprivation, for whom blessings become barriers and opportunities for guidance and closeness to you become the very cause of their sufferings. I knock at your door, my Lord, I'm at your threshold, my King. Do not let me turn away. May this door never become an obstacle. Open my being to you. Open my being to you and open the way for me. Ameen, 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 Ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu, Iyaka na'sa'in, Ihdina Salat al-Mustaqim. Salat al-Zina an'amta alayhim, Ghayr ma'udubi alayhim, Rabbalin, Ameen. Rabbi, salli ala al-Nabi, Shafi'ina, Oh, love.